Hello YouTube, Matt here from the Bluebell Modeler Railway Channel here with another model review. So this arrived slightly earlier than expected, I was kind of expecting this one in August, but this is Rapido Trains UK Metropolitan Railway number no. 1 E-Class in 00 scale and is an officially licensed product from the London Transport Museum. So this model was announced back in 2023, so quite a, a rapid turnaround and it was launched to coincide with the 160th anniversary of the start of services on the Metropolitan Railway. There are four variants, if they are still available, because this is quite a sought after model. There is L44 in London Transport Livery and L48 in London Transport Livery. There are two preservation examples uh, or livery schemes as there is only one of locomotive still surviving so the first livery is a condition between 1999 and 2009 with the brass dome and the brass safety valve bonnet as well as a slightly different uh, location on the crest and also uh, the Metropolitan and the Railway logos. The other one is the one sitting in front of us is of course Metropolitan number no. 1 from 2013 to 2020. And if you're looking to try and find this locomotive, it's currently in overhaul at the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre. This model cost me £152 or thereabouts from derails and the biscuits were lovely. This model also has in its specifications, it has a die cast injection moulded plastic construction. A high quality motor mechanism but doesn't actually tell us what type of motor. It has a next 18 decoder socket. It has high level detail and plenty, plenty of separately fitted parts. Era specific air brake equipment fitted within the cab. Optional use or user fitted trip cots. Air brake and vacuum hoses included. NEM pockets and sprung buffers. I did notice on the spec sheet there was actually no flywheel on the motor which I do feel this may have needed at some point. I would prefer to have that on there but unfortunately it does not have a flywheel. So let's have a closer look at this model and get into the details and see it running towards the end of the video. So before we get on to the model itself let's see what comes in the box. So of course you get the standard ice cube packaging within a foam box. You also get your user's manual or owner's manual which shows you how to fit the parts, how to get into the DCC decoder. Of course this is DCC ready. Get all your functions there. Parts and details included in the bag. Where to fit them. And some nice photos of it at Quainton Road or Buckinghamshire Railway Centre. We also have quite a selection of detail parts you can fit if you wish. You've got vacuum steam, brake, pipes, you also have the screw link couplings, um, air brake equipment, you also got doors for the cab, you also got the balance uh, water feed pipes because the water went underneath the bunker as well. Um, you also have trip cocks and various other bits and pieces in there. Some may be left off due to the uh, tight corners on your layouts so you do need to be careful what you fit and what you don't fit. Um, so I'll have a look at that when we get around to fitting a few details. So looking at the front end we have some sprung buffers which I've already mentioned are on this model, some lamp irons, some nicely lined out buffer beam there, some rivet detail as well as uh, where the uh, securing chains would be for breakaway situations on carriages but no chains, separately fitted smoke box door dart there and the front of the locomotive is nicely represented. The chimney seems like a separate moulding entirely instead of uh, half and a different top. It's an all one piece. 
nice fitted details from lubricators and various bits running down the side of the smoke box nicely lined out splasher a bit of a brass highlight in their standard brass finish you also have a standard NEM pocket on the front so moving along the side of the model here we have some nicely fitted uh, separately fitted handrails along the side of the boiler we do have a plastic pipe which I think has been pinched slightly in the packaging that's a bit of a shame there but you can't quite see it uh, moving down we've got again nicely lined splashes and some nice detail in between the frames uh, of where the motion is nicely lining on the steps separately fitted handrail on the front of the tank here some really nice lining on the side of the tank as well as really nicely printed lettering and numbering moving along the top we have the safety valves here and the dome both separately fitted moving on top of the tank we have parts for the uh, firing irons along the front of the locomotive as well as the filler cap and also the breather pipes for the tanks on either side of the cab got some pipe work represented in front of the cab here and also some nice flush glazing moving along we have the cab door and opening as well as a nicely printed Metropolitan uh, Railway logo So just looking through the uh, cab opening into the cab itself and we can see a really nicely intricately painted and detailed back head now one thing I didn't mention on uh, the features of this model is the firebox glow or flicker or maybe the lack of it I should probably add we do have a firebox light in there but for DCC ready users it doesn't exactly flicker and unfortunately all the lovely flickering effect is safe for those with a DCC chip or DCC fitted it's worth mentioning this is also available in sound and also DCC fitted so unfortunately for us who are just DC we will just get a nice red light with not really a flicker to be quite honest with you so that's a bit of a disappointing feature on this model it's quite a letdown in a way when modelers and also the model manufacturers themselves seem to be quite intent on pushing the electronics and lighting features but unfortunately not for everybody so that's a bit of a disappointing uh, point on my side one area I was a little bit disappointed with uh, when I saw the prototypes back uh, at Alexandra Palace back uh, in March 2023 was the fact that the cab vents uh, in the roof unfortunately were fully moulded shut on this particular model which I feel is a bit of a shame that they weren't moulded either open or were able to move um, because obviously on this locomotive being either underground outside or a very small cab the ventilation probably would have been welcomed and also when running the cab roof vents will probably be open also another small thing I'm going to mention is the cab roof isn't removable from what I can see so it is going to be quite a challenge to fit a crew in there moving around to the rear of the model the NEM pocket is on the bogey which is sprung and also we have some really nice lining detail around the back of the bunker again nice lining on the side there nice fake coal load some nice guard irons on the cab windows as the coal will go into the bunker you don't want them smashing the windows nicely fitted lamp irons along the base of the bunker as well as on the top nice rivet detail on the top as well nicely lining around the outside of the buffer beam and again those nicely sprung buffers So looking at the underside of this model, slightly different to other videos I do, we have power pickups on all the wheels using 
the back scratches or the wiper solution using phosphor bronze pickups. I can see that on all four fronts and also the bogey itself. Now the interesting thing on this model, a bit like the O2s from Kerno back in the day, the front four drivers are actually connected via gearing to stop them over rotating as uh, as you can see there's very little slop or slack or play in the front driving axles which is a nice feature and also keeps them uh, quartered nicely and as you can see we have the NEM pockets rear and front and also you can see various holes in the underside uh, for the details to fit into which we'll go into a bit later you can also see holes for the speaker here on the underside and you can access uh, the DCC decoder socket which is next 18 using the screws on the underside and lifting out the chassis. So with a quick review or roundup of uh, details and things to take note of let's head over to the rolling road and see it running. Just to show you a close-up of inside the cab with the firebox uh, flicker, or so called, uh, just behind the uh, reverser wheel there, uh, you can just see a red light. No flickering, no flashing, nothing. So it's a bit disappointing, I have to say. Um, not the most dramatic of firebox flickers I've ever seen. Um, still plenty of detail around there, but um, I have to say this is quite a little bit of a disappointment uh, on this side of things, kind of a bit of a letdown and a bit of, uh, in a way, false advertising. So to briefly summarise this model quickly, uh, so this model I purchased or pre-ordered from D-Rails, uh, who supply the wonderful biscuits. I paid £152.95, I believe they are RRP around about £179. Uh, this one is DCC ready, so that's the price point for this one. They also have DCC fitted, which is quite a bit higher, uh, or DCC fitted with sound I should say, uh, which has all the wonderful features with the Firebots flicker and sound which do sound rather good. Overall the running qualities I find are reasonable and good, a bit stuttery uh, to start off with but maybe it needs a little bit more running in as I do test these before I show you them. Um, I think a flywheel might have been a better thought to add in there as well. Pickups do work well on this one. The roof I feel the moulded closed roof vents would have been better, maybe slightly open or movable. I would have also liked to have seen the roof removable to allow you to add crew a bit more easily. The firebox flicker for DCC ready users is a bit of a kind of a, a miss sort of described item really. It's just a red bulb and it doesn't do anything. Um, so it's a bit disappointing on that side of things. The details, the weight, are all very good. It certainly looks like Metropolitan number one. Um, those who have carriages to go with these or wagons certainly would be brilliant. Um, as you know, I do sell a few myself uh, through Vector 3D models. And uh, overall, the model is 
really nicely done. There's a few small areas I think they should improve upon. I would have gone for the other preserved version, but I'm still not fully sold on the brass work on the dome and the safety valve bonnet as well. So um, it's a little bit of a concern heading towards the Southeastern Chatham 01. Um, but overall, I think it is a pretty sound model in terms of running, quality, weight and price. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave a like or a comment if you agree or disagree. And uh, hopefully I will see you again in the next one whenever that model may arrive. Speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.